All right, so I made my way into the Port Authority where the Greyhound bus stops, and I am confused. <laughs> this place is massive. I don't know where I need to go. There's multiple levels, and just for all intents and purposes, it might as well be a modern day maze. And because I have literally no reservations, no real plans, I'm just trying to wing everything at this point, and I have like no money. I am just making my way downtown. Making my way downtown, walking really just confused and probably slow. Through the Port Authority, being lost, being confused. And anybody who happens to have been there, you know, it's not a fun place. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not horrible. It's just, it's not fun. You know, you're walking around this like almost underground mall type place and it's a transit center because there's all sorts of stuff down there. There's shops and there's a Starbucks and McDonald's and all sorts of other stuff. And I'm just trying to find my way out. But there's so many things that want me to stay in. But fortunately, I managed to find my way out of Port Authority and I end up at Penn Station. Now, to be honest, at this point in my life, I don't remember if I stayed underground the whole time and found my way up or if I managed to actually go out on the surface and found my way back inside into Penn Station. But Penn Station was sort of where the next stage of this story happens. So I'm down there trying to figure out what the hell to do next. <laughs> and my phone is dying, so I might as well charge that up. Now, again, remember I don't have my PSP, so that, that's one thing I don't have to worry about charging anymore, I guess, even though I'm the one that has the cable. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's still not, uh, it's still not funny. Even almost eight years later, yeah. So I'm sitting there charging my phone and I realized that this outlet, only one of the two outlets works. So I just plugged my phone into it, my charger, and I'm charging it up. And very, very soon after somebody else comes by and they seem to also want to charge. And I'm like, well, crap. Oh, wait, I've brought myself a little extension cord. You know, one of those ones that has like three holes in it. And I'm like, hey, do you need to use this? Because uh, the, the other hole doesn't work but I got an extension cord, we can we can charge our phones, whatever. And, okay, cool. So he sits down and we start to talk. Come to find out, his name is also Justin. We trade our stories a little bit and I find out that he's here, he's there to see the K-pop group 21. Don't really know too much beyond that. I never really looked him up. I just, it's one of those things that I just kind of remember. And uh, apparently he was there he had been there with his dad. I, I don't know how much of his story is true. For all I know, he was just like me and he was just winging it and he was just better at lying than I was. Who knows? But it started a very interesting leg of this adventure. So after, you know, having conversed with each other, we're trying to figure out where to stay because neither one of us has a place to stay. Supposedly he had stayed in a hotel the night before, but then now, you know, he's not there anymore. And I'm like, what? why aren't you at another hotel or why aren't you at that hotel still? And the details then are fuzzy and then they're even more fuzzy now, but it didn't seem sketchy. And so whatever, I've just kind of went with it. I'm trying to make friends. I'm trying to find a way for me to survive this whole experience, this extremely unplanned experience into New York city, which by the way, don't ever do plan it plan good stay at least a week and enjoy yourself don't do like what i did because it just didn't work and we find our way down again somewhere not exactly sure it's a downstairs mcdonald's in another region that's i think somewhere in penn station or somewhere nearby and there's mcdonald's down there's an atm and so i'm like i got like maybe 10 15 dollars in my bank account I shouldn't be doing anything at this point. I should be going back home and giving up, but I didn't want to. So I pulled out, let's say 140 bucks. I don't remember the exact amount. Maybe it was only a hundred, but after having pulled that money out, I bought some lunch. We, you know, some McDonald's. I had my laptop with me. We used the Wi-Fi there to do some like couch surfing, right? 
We want to find out if there's anybody locally who's going to give us a place to stay because we both want to stay somewhere. But it ends up, for all intents and purposes, just kind of being a meetup. And I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit and I'll backtrack a bit. So from that couch surfing ad, we actually get a response. Later into that evening, we meet up with the guy at one of the bars and we're just kind of BSing for a little bit, have some sangria and all, but nothing comes of it. You know, we, we don't have a place to stay. He's in fact staying there as somebody else's couch. So we can't even use his couch because it's not his couch. Now going back to the McDonald's situation, after the the meetup and everything was planned, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull more money out. So I just pull out the, the max, the 200 at the time. We go through that whole couch surfing situation, kind of come back and we're just like trying to figure out what the hell to do. And we're up like all night. I mean, we it was late by the time that couch surfing meetup happened, I wanna say around 10. And we're just trying to figure out how the hell to go to sleep. So after we we find ourselves somewhere with some more internet, exactly not sure where, and I'm looking up hotels and nothing in New York City is even remotely inexpensive. Like the cheapest places are like a hundred and some odd dollars. And I happen to find a place that's out in Jersey, in Hoboken, I believe. So we slowly, laboriously, make our way out into Jersey. And, you know, we have to we have to find our way to the right place to get on the right bus. And remember, this is when things like, yeah, Google Maps worked and all, but it wasn't nearly as great as it is now. Internet wasn't really that great. So everything is really slow and it's just taking so much time. In fact, I might have used my phone as a hotspot that's <laughs> for the internet. I don't really know. Funny enough, I could do that now and it not be a problem and I get great internet connections. I can play video games, all sorts of stuff. But then, not so much. So we get ourselves into the transit center for wherever the hell we were <laughs> in Jersey. I could look this up. I really don't remember. It's been literally over seven years. And just trying to remember it is hard enough as it is. But we get there, it takes a long time, and now we're trying to find our way there because we're in Jersey, but we're still not there yet. We're still not where the hotel is. And so we've got a little ways to go and it's probably gonna be at least another hour or so transit wise because we gotta wait till buses show up and so on and so forth. That's the one bad thing about pretty much anywhere other than a place like New York City is that buses are gonna take a long time, whether it's between buses or the bus itself. So we finally get on it. We get out towards the hotel, but we it, there's no direct path to it via the bus. So we get off near the airport and we start walking down the service road towards the hotel. But I noticed that like, it doesn't look normal. Like there's a point, there's actually a, a string of hotels that are near each other, but there's like a giant fence, you know, with that green like tarp stuff. And as we continue, like, it looks like some kind of gate or something, you know, one of those little toll arms or something. We're, we're not exactly sure what that place is. It's still a ways down. You know, obviously it's getting to be more clear as to at least the nature of what it is when somebody on like i want to say like it was like a golf cart or something comes out and asks us what we're doing come to find out we were heading towards a prison <laughs> there is there's apparently prison in that area as well and we noticed during our walk that there were signs basically saying you know don't pick up hitchhikers because they're <laughs> they're near a prison and apparently the actually getting a hitchhikers in Jersey, at least at that time, was like a, a completely against the law. I don't know. I mean, we weren't hitchhikers. So like, you can't even hitchhike. So we couldn't be hitchhikers because that would be breaking the law. And apparently picking them up would also be breaking the law or something along those lines. So we don't really have much choice other than to really just turn around. And we head over to the hair airport. And I really don't remember why we headed over to the airport. But I think 
we may have seen a shuttle coming from the airport to the hotel. So as we head directly towards the airport to see about getting on a shuttle, we were walking through all the various traffic that feeds into the airport because we have no car. There's no Uber. Uh, the bus, it has a drop off, but we've already gotten off. We got off, I guess, at the wrong spot or something. That part, again, really fuzzy. But we're like trying to dodge traffic. We're playing fucking Frogger, man. Trying to get through this. This is a nightmare. I got my backpack. He's got his stuff. And we're just prodding along, trying to find our way through. Like, we all know where we need to go. It's not hard because we can see the signs and stuff. But if you've ever driven into an airport, that's hard enough. We walked into an airport via the same route that you would take with your car. Just think about that. <laughs> it's not a fun adventure whatsoever. But we still made it. We still get into the airport. We still get into, you know, like that open non-terminal area. And we get in and we were just trying to find our way to the exit that took us to the shuttles. And I'm nervous because I'm not sure if this is going to work. He's the other Justin. He's totally fine and thinks this is going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. And in fact, it was super easy, barely an inconvenience. And we get on our shuttle that's directed towards our hotel. We get there and my card is not declined, which is great. So I've managed to pull out at least $300 in cash. And now at this point, I've, I've paid for my hotel for one night. And I think it was like $80 or $90, maybe less. Doesn't matter because it was still cheaper than New York. And we get up there, I take a shower, I crash for like 16 hours. Like I slept, I think we got there around 10 a.m. And I slept pretty much until it was time for checkout the next day. In fact, I took my shower, maybe stayed up another hour or two tops, even though I was exhausted. When I finally go to sleep, I'm just gone. So while we're at the hotel, for all intents and purposes, Nothing eventful happens. I think he crashed immediately. I, like I said, I was up for a couple extra hours, then fell asleep. And I literally, I'm pretty certain that it was 16 hours of sleep because that kind of is concreted into my brain. And then it's time to check out. We check out. We get back on the shuttle, back to the airport. From the airport, we get on the actual bus that takes us all the way back to where we originally started from when it came to the transit center in Jersey. Then we get back on that one, the bus coming from Jersey into New York City. And now we're back, I wanna say, at Penn Station. The next few hours, I guess, are kind of a blur. I'm not exactly sure what happened because the next thing I can remember is that it's dark out and Justin and I are now splitting and we're gonna go our separate ways. And so I get back on one of the trains to head into one of the other boroughs to try to find a place to stay because at this point I'm still, I still want to stay in New York City. And I go to a hostel. It's an international hostel. It's one of the things that, you know, I'd been trying to use ever since I had found out about them back in Flagstaff. But because my ID is expired, they won't take me, which is weird because the hotel did. Meh, whatever. <laughs> different strokes for different folks, I guess. So I'm like, okay, well, let's go to another hotel. And I end up going out, I wanna say towards JFK, and it's not a great neighborhood where I was at, and I can't find anything. So I'm just riding the trains back and forth. And I finally, I guess, just decide, you know what? I don't have any options right now. It's just time to leave. So I head back in downtown and I get into the Greyhound station. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to Miami. And you know, there's like people kind of sleeping in in the the bus station, just kind of waiting for their, you know, their time to get out. And maybe someone was homeless, I'm not sure, but 
whatever the situation was, there were also New York cops down there and they were just kind of acting like assholes. It, one of them even kicks this dude's foot like hard to wake him up. He, he doesn't like maybe prod him with a nightstick or something. He literally like kicks this dude's foot so hard. And you know, he's got big old honking boots on. And I'm like, well, you have affirmed your dickish reputation. Your reputation has preceded you, and you have validated every BS thing that people have said. Good job, New York cop. That's not really what you should be doing, though. But whatever. And they're clearing us out because apparently the this specific area of the terminal is going to be getting cleaned or whatever. Which I think is weird because I figured, why not wait till everybody who's getting on their buses? Because I think we're all kind of going the same area. Whatever. Maybe it's one of those whole anti-homeless measures that a lot of uh, big cities have. And you know what? It's whatever. It's it's over and done with. But uh, at this point, my, my adventure in New York City is over. And the bus arrives. It's time for us to get on. And so I hop on and it's time to head to Miami.